Okay, this video is called How to Make Money in Radiology. And I just tell you this because basically most Western hospitals are pretty, pretty similar. I've worked in a whole bunch of hospitals. And I can tell you every morning there's this giant line of patients out there like making a pilgrimage to Canterbury that are coming in for diagnostic tests. And, you know, every American thinks they need to tube up their butt for colonoscopy and they need some type of screening CAT scan. Um, half of them think they need a mammogram. They love the pink ribbons. And they also tend to want to get bone density tests. And what I'm saying, though, is only about one out of a thousand wants to become a low-fat vegan. And the point is that you don't cure a disease by going for a diagnostic test. Sometimes you are in the middle of a complex situation with symptoms and you want to figure out what's going on and it makes sense to do additional diagnostic lab tests, blood tests, imaging, etc. However, what I'm talking about is a person who's totally healthy, asymptomatic in that sense, and they just volunteer for these screening studies. And what I'm going to tell you is I got 30 years of experience with this most of them get chumped. And when I say most of them get chumped, what I mean by that is they have no understanding of the concept of incidentaloma, and that's actually the most important issue. Incidentalomas, which means possible tumor findings, are the most common outcome of a screening study using a CAT scan. If you want to screen with ultrasound for some things, that's actually a lot safer and a lot cheaper. What I mean by that is some people come in to get checked for abdominal aorta aneurysm. Okay, not that big of a deal. We almost never see any type of incidental finding other than a fatty liver. Okay, and, and we don't even often look at the liver. So usually there will be no incidental OMA on one of those. For people who have hepatitis, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, they routinely screen them with ultrasound in the liver to exclude a tumor. And I actually think that's a very reasonable thing to do because we hardly ever see anything on those liver ultrasounds. And occasionally we do find a tumor. They'll send the patient for treatment, often a transcatheter arterial uh, chemoembolization, a TACE procedure it's called. Okay. But where I see patients often get screwed is on um, CAT scan screening. So a typical example would be a person used to smoke and now they come for a lung cancer screening chest CT, chest CAT scan. And it's very routine to see a lung nodule. Also, if they go for a routine screening chest x-ray. A lot of times there's a possible scarring. It could be a scar from some infection you had when you were a kid, okay? But there's still a scar in your lung, and nobody knows if that's cancer or not. So you get sent for a CAT scan, and on the CAT scan there's some micro nodule, like less than 5 millimeter nodule, typically subpleural, next to the chest wall, the pleural space. And then that gets followed routinely for at least two years. Uh, sometimes if there's a ground glass nodule, that means, you know, partially... Um, not completely solid, if you will. You can kind of see through it a little bit, like ground glass. That'll often be followed up for significantly more years. Okay, um, what about, um, well, what is it about screening? Screening is kind of weird. The patients think they're doing something proactive for their health. So patients love it. Um, and they just really have no understanding of it. They think they're like attempting to win the lottery and there's no downside. They don't understand these incidental lomas are a giant big deal. Let's say you go to a private practice hospital and they give you the first CAT scan for free. Well, do you think they're going to give you all the follow-ups for free? I wouldn't be so sure. And those follow-ups can lead to biopsies and other things that you don't need for a benign tumor, but no one knows sometimes and you have to biopsy it, okay? I've done thousands of biopsies. I know a lot about doing biopsies and I can tell you a lot of these things, you'd be better off not knowing, okay? Um, let's see. For example, you go for a screening CAT scan of the chest. Uh, it's not uncommon to find a thyroid nodule. Then you go for thyroid ultrasound. You meet criteria for biopsy. You still get the biopsy, okay? Um, not that many people die from thyroid cancer. It hardly ever happens, okay? It does happen sometimes, and that's why they check for it. But I'm just telling you, I'm trying to help you here, Okay. And this is another one of those weird things where people get mad at you. How could you not think that screening is such a wonderful thing? We can have an early diagnosis and save the patient's life. And what I'm saying is, are you really that sure? Are you really that sure that the treatment makes any difference? Are you not simply having a lead length bias where you find it earlier and so it seems like you live longer? And what I'm saying is, what's going to make you live longer by far most likely? What does almost everybody die from? Well, the vast majority of people. Something to do with atherosclerosis, plugging up an artery in their heart or their brain, uh, and also making tissue ischemic, causing cancer. So 
the real smart money is on low fat, low sodium vegan to, per, to maintain good blood flow everywhere and not get ischemia, lack of oxygen delivery to tissue, which tends to lead to atherosclerotic arterial occlusion as well as cancer through the, Var, the Warburg effect, Warburg effect. Okay, um, what also happens too is if you get a CAT scan that involves the abdomen at all, you know, the old joke in radiology is what's the definition of a healthy person? Somebody who hasn't had a body CT yet. And that means a CAT scan of the chest, abdomen, or pelvis. That's what's meant by body CT. And the reason is when you look at the liver, it's very common. The liver will have some small cyst. You can't tell if it's cancer or not. So the patient then gets sent for an MRI or a four-phase liver CT with IV contrast. Same thing in the kidney. It's very routine to have kidney cysts, super common. And very often they're mildly complex. They have a thin septation. They have a calcification in the wall. The patient can be followed up on ultrasound for years. Sometimes they're followed up with CAT scan and MRI. Um, let's say you see a little pancreas cyst. You don't know what it is. It's probably, you know, a benign cyst. It's probably of no significance, but there's always a concern, you know, interductal papillary mucinous tumor. There's always a concern. Could it be a pancreatic cancer? And so the routine screening protocol in a lot of places is follow up with an MRI every year for five years. Okay, that's a lot of MRIs. Okay, but that's all these routine screening because, you know, the, the hospitals have to cover their ass, so to speak, which means they've got to get close follow up to make sure that, you know, they don't know what the incidentaloma is initially, even though they know it's almost for sure not cancer, but it could be cancer. Even if it's one out of 100, they have to follow it. Okay, so they make tons of money from this. When I was a resident and I rotated through a hospital, um, this was at Evanston Hospital, the head guy over there, he was a nice guy, he was kind of funny, and he goes, he pointed to the CAT scanner, he says, that is our machine for printing money, okay? Um, so, like I said, tons of people, they've got these really thick film jackets, these thick lists of films, because once you get into the ball, you know, the joke about a radiology department is, it's basically like Hotel California. You can check in, but you can never leave in the sense that it's very common to have these incidental illness forever. So what I'm saying is, what's the whole point of this? Be smart. Focus on making yourself healthy so you're unlikely to ever get sick. You know, as a famous cancer patient said, uh, you don't, you're not sick because you have cancer. You have cancer because you're sick, meaning that if you optimize your health, you're unlikely to get a clinically significant cancer. And the other thing to be aware of is you should know the difference between a turtle, a vulture, and a rabbit. Okay, this was described by the guy at the Cleveland Clinic. And the point of it is that if you imagine you're a farmer and you owned a 100-yard diameter, uh, you mean a 100-mile diameter farm. Okay, you have an animal enclosure in the center. Well, if there's a vulture, the vulture just gets out of the enclosure, flies over the fence, you're screwed, you're dead. Okay, that almost never happens, but when it does, they'll make a movie out of it. Uh, you know, Brian Song or something like that. And there's nothing anybody can do. Those happen so fast, they would happen in a screening interval and you'll never catch them. Okay, those are really, really, really rare. All right, the next thing is what everybody thinks cancer is. They think it's a rabbit. And a rabbit gets out of the enclosure, it digs a hole underneath the fence, it starts bolting for this fence. You try to stop it, catch it, trap it, don't let it get out. And by getting out, we mean kill the patient. Okay, and then, but what, they, what the public doesn't know is the vast majority of cancers are turtles. And when I say turtles, think about things like prostate cancers. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them grow so slow, the patient's going to die for some other reason anyways. You know, if you do autopsies on all these old people, tons of these old guys will have, um, you know, prostate cancers and other problems. And I believe everybody's got some cancer cells in their body. The immune system just keeps it under control. So what's the smart move? The smart move is maintain good function of your immune system by maintaining good blood flow, by not adding excessive salt to your food, by avoiding all these toxic chemicals that cause leaky gut or that cause dis destruction of tissue, things like F minus, things like GP, and they sort of confuse your immune system, all the meat and fat that hyperactivates the immune system, and the sodium can hyperactivate the immune system as, too, the immune system as well, all these things that cause leaky gut, and they sort of overactivate your immune system. So just avoid all that. So what I'm trying to say is, be smart and focus on doing what makes you healthy. If you want to do the screen stuff, do it on your own time. But the smart move is do all the stuff that prevents disease rather than just screen, 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 where I can tell you the vast majority of the stuff. Yeah, sometimes they find an early cancer. And yes, sometimes it really helps the patient and could even see it save their life. Yes, I have seen that. But for every time I see that, and I've been in, in screen business for many, 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 many years. I see tons and tons and tons of incidentalomas. At every hospital in the Western world, there's tons of those every day. So anyways, uh, that's the scoop on screening. Dr. McDougall has some lectures too where he goes over. As a matter of fact, I think I heard him say that the only screening test that he thinks is useful is just a screening sigmoidoscopy of the colon in appropriate patients. 
uh, and that was the only one that he thought was useful. But uh, anyways, it, there's more to this topic than that. I'm not going to get into it uh, anymore at this point. I uh, hope that